Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. I am Anand welcoming you all on behalf of Solar Quarter and First View Group to our webinar on CNI Solar Projects Market Outlook Saudi Arabia edition. Thank you all the attendees for joining us today. I hope all the attendees had a great time networking with your peers in our exhibition tables. If you have not visited no worries. The platform will be open till 1 pm today so you can start networking. So before starting today's proceedings, I take this opportunity to thank and welcome our partner for this event, Huawei and Skur Energy. Now, I request my team to please play the sponsor video of Huawei. Is it that takes us further into the future? It exists in every visible detail. and somewhere in the unexplored possibilities. We imagine countless times that dry deserts become lush oases. And now it has become a reality. Sunlight spur a new ray of hope. Make the earth green and breathe new life everywhere. size from rural to urban areas get simplified gradually conserve the nature and ensure seamless connectivity turning complexity into simplicity modular construction of data centers is designed for an intelligent digital world to unleash cloud computing potential and to accelerate the smart future speed up for future transport for every pleasure travel green power is used to achieve an excellent experience Modular power can be highly integrated and applied everywhere. To light up the moments you are looking forward to, bring unlimited possibilities and make life better and convenient. Huawei Digital Power Preserve Earth with technologies. For Zero Carbon Smart Society. Thank you. So now without any further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Rizwan Razak from Huawei Technologies to give his presentation. Rizwan, so you can share your screen. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Rizwan. I'm the uh, CTO for the Middle East and Africa region. And today I'll be presenting uh, the latest solution from Huawei. Just give me one second. So all scenarios and smart PV plus storage solutions from Huawei. So uh, if uh, many of you are not familiar, uh, Huawei is the number one uh, inverter supplier in terms of shipment for five consecutive years. Um, and we've supplied over 200 gigawatts of uh, inverters globally. Um, as you can see, here are some of our key reference projects within the region of the Middle East and Africa. Uh, um, projects such as the Dubai Museum, the world's largest PV plant um, in uh, China, which is around 2.2 gigawatts, uh, partially with Huawei and other, other brands as well for comparison purposes. And then we also have hydro um, hybrid plants uh, with Huawei as well um, across Africa as well. So with the rapid development of renewable energies, uh, grid stability and system safety becomes a major factor. Um, if we consider um, the recent changes 
um, and factors that have impacted this uh, from scenarios of Australia, where around 50 hours of power outages uh, occurred. This uh, incurred local uh, grid operators to really look into their uh, electricity uh, providers uh, and see how the generation is being provided and look at specifically the standards uh, of new types of generations that are being connected to the grid. Other factors such as the uh, Spanish uh, NTS revised the standard uh, for the required uh, short circuit ratio of around 1.5 to be incorporated as well as of uh, 2020. Um, and we also saw other factors uh, in regards to the IEC standards as well, uh, in regards to what factors of uh, rapid shutdown services were required from inverter equipments uh, that were being installed. So if we look at the existing uh, power systems specifically, there are synchronized uh, generators uh, where they are coming from uh, typically a large uh, generation plant. And they are typically uh, going in one direction uh, where they are providing uh, uh, power uh, for facilities such as the industrial facilities, household, uh, etc. And the power supply consumption uh, is, is, is in, a, in a single source. So the energy flow is going in one direction. Now, if we consider the new power systems such as uh, PV, uh, wind, and also storage as well, um, where we see around 85% uh, being the mix in the coming years, uh, that will incur a complete change in the energy flow itself. So we'll need to look at bi-directional energy flow to ensure that the high voltage uh, equipment, such as the grid, uh, such as the uh, storage itself, will be able to accommodate for that power flow itself. Um, as we can un understand, uh, it, there has been a recent increase in the residential uh, sector as well, and also with the rapid growth of the oil prices increasing, uh, many um, in the global demand uh, are requiring electrical vehicles rather than the uh, more traditional, uh, more traditional the, the, the conventional um, combustion engines. So these are the current outlooks of what we are uh, looking into. And if we consider uh, the digital power electronic technologies, um, we need to consider certain factors such as the five core technologies the bits of censoring the data, the connectivity uh, of that information, how we will get that information to a cloud, uh, uh, so, such as the data and the algorithms um, of that system itself. And then looking at the AI, which uh, needs to be incorporated within the chipsets of the products that are being uh, utilized um, in the uh, renewable plants themselves. Other factors, uh, such as from a component level perspective, looking at the material, looking at the items such as the IGBTs, um, and looking at the control algorithms to ensure that the uh, items are uh, at their optimum efficiencies. Um, regions such as in the Middle East, where you know temperatures are to more of an extreme compared to other regions, um, we are exposed to the, the factor of heat and ensuring that the de-rating factors are accommodated accordingly. Um, and these uh, five core technologies underlying the, the applications of what we are installing. So the four large scale application scenarios which we are looking into today and, and, and presenting are the smart PV generator from a uh, renewable sector, the CNI, um, along with the utility scale applications. And lastly, um, the off grid uh, applications themselves. So let's introduce you the latest solution for the utility scale applications. Um, we call it the Fusion Solar 8.0 Smart PV Generator. And as you can see here, an overview on the bottom side, we're utilizing a plus minus 1,500 volt bipolar smart string architecture. So this is a, a DC coupled uh, energy storage uh, system where we will be uh, utilizing the smart string controller in the field uh, and the smart hybrid controller, which will be localized to where the transformer station would be uh, located. Um, and then we're also in, uh, uh, providing the Jupiter SDS station, which is a larger capacity transformer station as well. So a full package uh, offering from Huawei, from the uh, Venus 2000, the Luna 2000, smart hybrid controller, along with the STS as well. If you look at the traditional uh, types of equipment that is currently being utilized 
on PV plants, uh, you've got the Fusion Solar 6.0. So as most of you are familiar with, you've got the uh, PV modules directly connected to a uh, inverter. That inverter is typically installed in the field and then a, an AC cable run going back to your transformer station. With the new architecture of Fusion Solar 8.0, we've got a smart string controller in the field, which will be uh, collecting your strings uh, from your PV, uh, uh, PV modules. That will then be uh, transferred back at a plus minus, we call it a bipolar uh, 1500 volt, back to your smart hybrid controller, localized to your transformer station, which will uh, ensure that from your uh, cable losses perspective, uh, we can further minimize uh, and in, uh, have a saving on the BOS, whilst also increasing the yield by around 2%, uh, specifically with the, uh, uh, the new modules that are becoming available in the industry. So other factors, uh, as we explained, energy storage will become quite a large uh, uh, part of the renewable energy mix in the coming years. Um, and in to ensure that the, the, the best optimum LCOE, uh, LCOS sorry, uh, is provided, uh, we are needing to ensure that the distributed cooling is incorporated within the equipment, whilst also having pack level optimization um, and also having the rack level optimization as well to ensure the most optimum uh, power can be provided from the equipment that's being utilized. So grid forming, as I mentioned, some of the challenges in the earlier parts of the slides, uh, PV um, plus the smart PV generator will need to synchronize with the uh, existing grids and to ensure that a more stable power source is being provided. So the emissions from harmonics, high voltage ride through capabilities, and also a bi-directional um, power flow will need to be provided um, in regards to uh, the equipment that's being provided. So from a, a safety perspective uh, on a PV system itself, uh, DC protection is one of the levels of protection that we've able to accommod accommodate for uh, within the smart string controller in the field, whilst also providing an LV DC protection on the DC uh, uh, switch disconnector fuse within the equipment itself, and also the AC protection on the uh, H HV side as well. Now, if we consider uh, the pack level protection um, if there was to be uh, a, a, an, is, uh, an incident of uh, an issue within the, optim within the packs themselves, they are independently uh, optimized and uh, they are uh, able to uh, safely uh, distribute that, that uh, power. Now, for the residential sector, which we've entered in the last two and a half years, um, we have not seen much development here in the Middle East. However, in other regions such as in Europe, um, actually, the residential solution is one of the most, um, uh, let's say, favorable solutions that our clients are, are selecting. So depending on whether you are just looking for a standard PV system or you're looking for a system with an energy storage incorporated, we are able to accommodate that uh, with our um, uh, solutions from the smart uh, module optimization, uh, optimizer, the smart energy center, and the smart storage solution as well. And that's then all fed back to the monitoring platform, which is cloud-based uh, and able to be uh, utilized from the end client perspective and also uh, from a operation and maintenance team as well. So AI-based uh, PV storage and synergy to increase the self-use ratio of the green electricity by around 10% and to reduce the power consumption cost by around 5%. So as you can understand, the um, the, the radiators, the, the equipment that you're utilizing within the uh, ESS equipment needs to ensure that the most optimum output can be produced. So uh, items such as uh, fans, items such as um, cooling equipment, such as liquid cooling, uh, we've seen from our track record that it's not the most optimum solution. Um, and the uh, solutions that we are incorporating uh, within the uh, solutions are able to accommodate for that. Now, for the CNI applications, um, this will be introduced uh, from 2022, uh, where the smart energy uh, inverter 
uh, will be uh, connected uh, to the system whilst also having a smart energy storage controller uh, to also uh, provide our customers with the smart energy storage solution as well. So all scenarios uh, and, and digital management for an open cloud platform enabling uh, an automatic drive uh, for the PV storage plants. So whether you are looking at a utility scale applications uh, or also just looking for energy storage, everything uh, is able to be provided as a, as a turnkey package uh, from Huawei. Um, I'd like to finish it there. I understand that uh, is a short time for the initial presentation and I'll hand it back over to the moderator. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this wonderful and knowledgeable presentation. Now, moving forward, I want to invite Abun, Abunyan Trading uh, to give his presentation. Fahad, uh, sir. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Anand. Uh, sorry, Anand. Uh, is that a screen visible for you? Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Fahad Al Hussain. I am pre-sales and uh, business uh, support uh, specialist uh, working uh, at uh, Opanigan Trading. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank uh, Solar Quarter for arranging uh, this webinar and uh, panel discussion to discuss uh, the C&I uh, Solar uh, PP project uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, today, uh, I would like uh, to present to you this uh, this uh, presentation to share with you some of our success, the stories that uh, we have achieved with uh, our uh, partner and what we have achieved. Uh, in the solar uh, market uh, in the recent uh, year, especially in the C&I uh, market. Uh, in this presentation, I am going to give a brief uh, company introduction about uh, Aponian uh, Trading. Uh, then uh, what are the services and the solutions that we can offer to our customers. Then at the end of this presentation, I will share with you some of uh, our uh, project, our, our project reference cases that we have supplied. Uh, and installed already in the C&I uh, in the C&I uh, market. Uh, who we are? Uh, Abonian Trading uh, is uh, one of the oldest trading uh, company uh, in the Middle East. Uh, it was founded by Abdullah Abonian Trading in 1950. Uh, we have been in the business uh, for more than 65 uh, years. Uh, along with it is ex expertise, uh, Abanian Trading uh, provides uh, integrated uh, solution in water and wastewater, uh, power, uh, heavy machinery, uh, electrical, and renewable energy uh, solutions. Uh, Abanian Trading uh, market uh, presence. Uh, Abanian Trading headquarter uh, is located uh, in Riyadh. Uh, we have sales uh, offices uh, distributed in all of our uh, the kingdom. Uh, Abanian Trading is uh, the value added partner uh, in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain for Huawei solar inverters uh, since 2018. Uh, Abunyan uh, Trading is a leading uh, trading uh, company in the solar uh, industry in the Middle East, uh, in the Middle East uh, region. Uh, we have uh, continuous uh, year and year uh, growth. Uh, here are some of the uh, services and the solutions that we can offer to our uh, customers. Uh, Abunyan Trading is a product uh, supplier. We can uh, we can offer to our customer complete solar solution. Uh, including Huawei solar inverters, uh, solar models, uh, mounting structure, and DC cables as well. Uh, we have distributed the sales offices and warehouses in all of our uh, kingdom. Uh, Abunyan Trading uh, has always available stock for Huawei uh, solar inverters range for residential, commercial, and uh, industri uh, industrial as well uh, for fast uh, delivery to our uh, customers. Uh, one of the services that we are offer to uh, our uh, customers uh, is uh, the pre-sales uh, services. 
uh, we offer uh, or we, we provide uh, engineering support to our customer in the design of the server PP uh, systems to ensure that our system integrator or our customer uh, is optimizing the best solution for their, their, for their PP uh, project. Uh, and also we provide the training uh, online and uh, office workshops. Uh, another services that we offer to our customer is after sales uh, services. Uh, we provide, we offer on-site uh, technical support, uh, remote technical support, uh, the warranty for all the solar products and Huawei inverters is completely handled by Abonian Trading. Uh, we started uh, the solar business at Abonian Trading in 2018, uh, so we have uh, we are uh, in four years uh, in service uh, in the solar market in Saudi Arabia. We have strong expertise in the local solar market. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, we ad we have addressed more than 200 solar system integrator in the market. Uh, we are the largest uh, distributor for the solar products in Saudi Arabia. And soon, inshallah, we will release and launch the, the e-commerce uh, open again e-commerce platform. So it will allow our customer to buy uh, the solar products directly from uh, the website. Here I would like to share with you some uh, project uh, reference uh, cases that we have uh, supplied and installed. Uh, here, like before, uh, the project reference cases, this is uh, approximate uh, the total supply the capacity of our solar inverters for residential and commercial and the industrial uh, market is plus 100 uh, megawatt of Huawei solar inverters. Uh, these are uh, some of the project reference uh, cases uh, that we have supplied. As opening and trading and uh, Huawei, uh, we are proud uh, that uh, we supplied uh, the first utility scale uh, solar PV plant in Saudi Arabia in Skaka. Uh, the project capacity is uh, 300 megawatt and the, operate, uh, the operation date was uh, in 2020. Uh, all the inverters supplied uh, outdoor uh, and in, in harsh uh, environment and the performance of the inverters uh, exceeding uh, the production expectation uh, for this project. Uh, another project uh, we supplied uh, recently, uh, 10 megawatt project uh, in Neom. Uh, engineer Hassan Bader, he is uh, with us in this panel discussion. He can tell us and share his experience with us uh, later on and later on this panel discussion to tell us uh, about uh, this uh, supplied uh, project. Uh, another project that we uh, supplied uh, to Al Marai uh, to Al Marai. Uh, we, we supply 16.5 megawatt uh, inverters, uh, 6.5 mega was, uh, was a rooftop, uh, was a rooftop uh, locations uh, in, uh, and it's distributed. project was, uh, was supplied in the ground mounting uh, structure. Uh, and and along with the Marai, also we supplied the Nadic project, the 30 megawatt project as well. Uh, another project that we supplied, uh, and this is one of the uh, first projects that we supplied uh, of Hawaii solar inverters in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was supplied to Al Panar Industrial City. Uh, it was 3.9 megawatt uh, capacity. Uh, the location area of the supplied inverter is uh, 36, uh, some 2036 uh, PTL, and the performance of the inverter is very great, uh, and the failure rate is very low. This is another project that we supplied uh, for uh, for uh, macro uh, macro industrial uh, or aluminium uh, factory. Uh, we supplied the three megawatt uh, capacity. It was uh, divided into three phases. The first uh, phase was one megawatt in 2019. The second uh, phase in 2020, and the third phase uh, in, in this. Term. All the supply investor in this project was uh, was uh, where the sun 2060 and sun this is another project that uh, has been uh, supplied uh, recently. 
in 2021, uh, the project capacity was 1.2 megawatt in industry of rooftop, uh, and the supplied inverter was at uh, some 2060 kTA. This is another uh, project uh, for uh, governmental uh, entity uh, to for uh, Riyadh uh, municipality project. It was carport uh, project. Uh, the installed capacity was 1.2 megawatt, and uh, the installation date uh, was uh, in uh, in 2020. Uh, this is another strategic uh, project that uh, we supplied uh, to farms uh, supermarket. Uh, distributed PP plants in all of the kingdom. The total capacity is two megawatt uh, capacity. And this one uh, as well, we supplied uh, the first uh, the first uh, solar PP plant installed in uh, this old electricity uh, company was supplied by uh, Huawei. Uh, the project capacity is 300 uh, kilowatt and location in uh, Another uh, one of the most important strategic uh, projects that we have supplied to Panorama Mall. Uh, it is one of the uh, commercial rooftops that we have supplied. Uh, the project uh, the project capacity is 300 kilowatt and the supply inverter is some 2050 KTL. Uh, the performance of the inverters uh, is exceeding the expectation. Uh, and, the, and the, the failure rate is very low. And this is another uh, and, and this is another uh, commercial roof uh, project uh, was supplied to Raji Bank, and also we supplied to uh, Saudi Investment Bank and uh, the SNB Bank. But this is all uh, for my presentation uh, today. Uh, just would like to share our market uh, market uh, sharing experience. With you for the CNDI uh, market. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this insightful presentation and setting the tone for today's event. So now it's time to begin with our much awaited panel discussion, which is on CNI solar project market outlook of Saudi Arabia. And to discuss this, we have in the panel with us Mr. Rizwan Razak from Huawei. Mr. Fahad Al Hussein from Abu Nayan Trading, Mr. Noor Moussa from Desert Technology, Mr. Arif Aga from Skurgar Energy, Mr. Moin Hassan, Solar Land Energy, Mr. Hussein Border from Louis Burger Power KSA. The discussion will be led by Mr. Nabi Chiradi, sir, from Desert Technology. So now I welcome all the panelists on the screen and requesting Nabi sir to please read the discussion. Nabi sir. Uh, uh, so you're not audible. Uh, uh, so can you please unmute yourself and then uh, try to uh, mute yourself and then un unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, no, so you're not audible. Uh, uh, I request you to please uh, rejoin once again, my maybe. So, yes, sir. Uh, so you're not audible. Can you please rejoin once again? Uh, uh, I request all the other panelists to, if you, they can switch on the camera so we can start with the discussion. Uh, Hussam, sir, can you please uh, lead the discussion for the timing? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Anand. Uh, thank you very much for Huawei, for Abu Nayyan, for, uh, for this prepared, uh, prepared discussion uh, about uh, CNA, solar projects uh, in Saudi market. Um, uh, in my point of view, uh, starting uh, for about Saudi Arabia, CNA, uh, CN, CNA projects, uh, we can see in last two years uh, the growth in C and A projects in Saudi Arabia. 
as we see uh, in uh, the growth uh, the growth uh, scale starting from 2010 to 2020 we can see in 2010 there was 2.3 megawatt installed base in saudi arabia while we can see now uh, more than 450 megawatt installed base solar pv including sakaka so we can see the growth in Saudi market more than 60% uh, in solar PV projects. Um, as there, as there, uh, uh, the prepared uh, agenda for for this uh, for this panel, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Razwan, uh, what what is uh, as he is the uh, the uh, the biggest uh, inverter uh, uh, manufacturer uh, globally. So uh, can you please just give brief about the current installed capacity uh, in Saudi market? Yes, so um, with regards to Saudi Arabia, um, we have successfully uh, won uh, the Sakaka plant. So that's now been operating for just over two years now. Um, and other projects such as the, the Naduk uh, project, which is around 30 megawatts. And as our partner um, uh, from Abu Nayan, Mr. Fahad mentioned uh, there is some other CNI projects which have been uh, also successfully uh, deployed within uh, Saudi itself. Other projects are up, uh, coming into, into play uh, in terms of connection. Uh, in the next year, year and a half, you will start to see Rebdo 2 projects uh, being incorporated, which are utility scale applications uh, being uh, connected and commissioned to the, to the grid itself. Um, and these are equating to around one gigawatt uh, of of, uh, of projects itself. So you've got um, around three projects within Rebdo two, uh, which are uh, will be connected in the coming years, and two of which uh, have successfully been secured with Huawei. Um, so we've got a very good market presence within the Saudi market itself, um, and in the coming years uh, we will see a vast mix of energy flow being uh, utilized. So projects such as the Red Sea, I'm sure many of you have seen the publications of the the largest uh, ESS uh, project along with um, storage um, and uh, PV as well being connected as well. Um, so we do see a development on the let's say large scale utility scale side. Um, as for the CNI and residential side, uh, there needs to be, um, let's say, uh, subsidies and um, policies made in order for the progression in the residential and the CNI sector itself. And I do see that becoming a factor in the coming years. It's just uh, something which will take time for the policies to be released uh, within the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Razwan. Uh, I would like also to take a note uh, from uh, from Mr. Noor uh, Musa. Mr. Noor Musa is the CEO of Desert Technology. Desert Technology is uh, the leading manufacturing uh, and EPC uh, company in Saudi Arabia, who's manufacturing solar PV and they have EPCR within their company. Mr. Noor. Nursa, can you hear us? Uh, you're on mute. Nursa, can you hear us? Uh, you're just on mute. If you can mute, unmute yourself. Mm. Samsa, you can. Uh, Nabisa, can you uh, try? Navisa, can you hear me? And if you can try to like if, uh, try to speak, you're not audible. Not audible. Uh, so let's take uh, the uh, opinion of Arif uh, about Saudi market for the installed base in CIA uh, projects level. So Arif, can you please give us your opinion? Arif sir, uh, 
so Norsa is uh, was trying. Yes, to... I'm, I'm here, but so I uh, there's there seems to be. Uh, yes, so uh, you're audible now. You can uh, you can go go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Can, uh, yeah, you can also switch on your camera one. So. Uh, I'm sorry, I got cut off uh, for a second. W what were you saying? Uh, yes, Hussam, so you can uh, take the side. Uh, what yeah, you can proceed, Noor, please. Uh, the yeah, question yeah. is related to Saudi C and I market related sure. to installed base in Saudi Arabia. If you can give you, give us your opinion about it. Sure, sure. So, so we obviously the the sector is heavily subsidized at the at the current moment. You know, with with agriculture, industrial, you know, below 20 halala, you know, we're looking at 18, 19 halala on, on both commercial, uh, sorry, the industrial uh, agriculture uh, sectors, the lower sector of the uh, housing. However, if you look at the uh, commercial, it's at 30 halala, which is still heavily subsidized and the government is at 32. Now it is expected that at the end of uh, 2022, which is uh, is that they would actually remove the subsidies, which is about 200 million, uh, 200 billion riel at the moment, um, in terms of the annual budget. And if we look at diesel prices, um, just uh, commercial diesel prices uh, in terms of rentals or or or, or as a PPA. You know, it, it costs somewhere between, you know, 22 to 30 halala, more or less, um, including the cost of fuel and so forth. Uh, and the cost of fuel pertains to about 18 halala. Um, and if you look at the unsubsidized cost of, of diesel, you know, and if you, if you look at the prices, you're closer to almost one real per kilowatt hour right which is significantly you know almost three to four times the current costs now we uh, don't anticipate that the entire sector or or the prices will jump to that uh, level but we definitely will see uh, significant increases in prices um especially on the commercial side uh, where um you know you're looking at potentially north of 70 halala uh, per kilowatt hour on the industrial side it is uh, quite questionable uh, what levels of subsidies will uh, continue to have but definitely an increase in tariffs uh, from the current uh, 18 or 19 halala to uh, roughly north of of 30 halala uh, at, you know, to to the levels of 10 cents, uh, you know, 35 halala or 37 halala, it's still much cheaper than any commercial or industrial uh, tariffs that, you know, in, uh, in the unsubsidized uh, developed markets. Um, that's really where I see tariffs at the moment. And, and uh, you know, tariffs today, like uh, just to wrap up, are somewhere 18, 19 cents uh, for uh, industrial and agriculture. Commercial is at uh, 30. Uh, it's to jump towards uh, somewhere to mid 30s and commercial to jump north of 75 halala uh, by the end of next year or beginning of 2023. Um, I'm more than happy to, to follow up uh, further. Thank you, thank you, Noor. Uh, how how you see the market in off grid off grid uh, projects or off grid uh, industrial area or commercial area? Uh, yeah. There is a special tariff for for their operation cost of installed base generators, uh, their consumption of fuel, limitation of fuel consumption uh, by by the specified quota by Aramco. Sure. I, I mean, at the moment, uh, you're seeing prices, you know, again, it, it, it boils down to uh, diesel generator costs. Um, I mean, cost uh, levelized cost of electricity, which is currently somewhere between, you know, 22, 23 halala, all the way to 30 halala, depending on how remote 
the location is. Um, and, and the size, obviously, the bigger the size, the cheaper the price. Um, so, but again, the range is somewhere between 23 to 30 halala. Um, that is going to significantly be north of 75 to even one real per kilowatt hour by the end of next year. Um, and we're seeing much, much, uh, uh, you know, stricter regulations around diesel, tighter uh, quotas. Um, it's not as easy as before. And, and, and the likelihood uh, when they start removing uh, the subsidies from diesel, you're going to see uh, solar uh, and battery uh, systems uh, really taking off and potentially with diesel backup. Thank you. Thank you, Noor. Thank you, Noor. Uh, I would like to direct another question to uh, Fahad. Uh, Fahad, I would like to ask you about the uh, impact on market growth after uh, the big installation of the biggest project in Saudi Arabia for smart meters. How you see the market uh, after installing uh, net metering in Saudi, uh, in Saudi residential level uh, and commercial level uh, of uh, network? Uh, thanks. Uh... Mr. Hassan, uh, actually, uh, the, the tenant metering and uh, regulation uh, still under uh, under it's it's released and it's more active now uh, in the market. Uh, there are some projects that has been uh, already approved uh, by SIG for uh, net billing uh, and exporting uh, to uh, to uh, the grid. Uh, I. I I can see this like I can see uh, I would say I would say uh, that for upcoming year we will notice uh, like big growth uh, in the C and I uh, market uh, especially uh, and especially uh, there will be uh, there will be certain uh, approvals uh, and uh, more approvals uh, for the for the same entire projects uh, in uh, in uh, South Korea. So I am expecting for next year to be uh, will be more growth uh, in the in the, in the uh, commercial and uh, industrial uh, sectors. Thank you, thank you, Fahad. Uh, in my point of view, I need to add some points related to net metering, the biggest project for installation of smart meters in Saudi uh, network. Uh, just in my point of view, I need to add that this will help too much and for encouraging uh, uh, in a commercial and industrial level of uh, customers that they can store the uh, excess power of solar during the day to the network and they can consume it at the night. So a net meter can help to, to just show the uh, maximum power uh, maximum power usage uh, by the uh, commercial and industrial uh, level uh, or sector. So uh, the customer will be encouraged because during the day, uh, the malls uh, sometimes will be uh, less, uh, less occupied by the customer, so less usage of power. So at that time, they can store or export the power from solar PV uh, to the network and at the, at the night when when these uh, malls or industrial or um, can be more occupied so they can use what they export to the network this will encourage more a uh, commercial level and industrial level to uh, to uh, go with uh, solar solutions to compensate the uh, tariff uh, tariff level because uh, as as highlighted in the beginning tariff uh, level is still not encouraging commercial and industrial level to go with uh, solar solutions. So by adding net meters, in my point of view, will encourage them more to go with, uh, with the renewable energy solutions. Uh, I will go now uh, to another point uh, for a discussion uh, regarding uh, the tariff, uh, sorry, uh, 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 the funding uh, for, uh, in solar Arabia for a rooftop uh, applications. 
Fahad, can you give more more details about the funding of Saudi Arabia and uh, to encourage uh, the investors or uh, users to go with solar solutions? Uh, I would I would discredit this uh, point uh, to other uh, speaker because like our uh, our uh, role uh, in here like uh, we are opening on as a product uh, supplier. Uh, for one thing, I would ask it if, if, uh, if uh, Tamster Noor or Nabi from Teaser Chat Technology uh, can uh, highlight in this uh, point. Uh, Mr. Nabi, uh, your uh, mic uh, is, uh, is working or not? Still not working. So I'll direct uh, the question to uh, Mr. Noor to answer uh, this question. Uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, the question uh, is related to uh, funding of Saudi Arabia uh, for a lo rooftop applications of solar PV to encourage uh, the investors or users. Uh, I mean, today we, you know, there, there's, there's, um, two uh, venues, one is SIDF and the other is a, is a uh, is an agreement that we've signed with uh, Riyadh Bank um, to actually finance uh, rooftops, right, for, uh, for commercial and industrial uh, clients. So any clients of ours, um, you know, they get to uh, enjoy the, the 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 luxury of of getting a um, a facility from riyadh bank uh, as per the agreement now obviously that is a risk adjusted uh, interest rate um, i think uh, from both uh, whether it's through riyadh bank or through uh, sidf but typically, I mean, it's it's uh, it would be you know uh, somewhere uh, you know below uh, single uh, you know somewhere mid single digits, you know. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Noor. Thank you. And uh, now moving to uh, technical questions, I'll go to Arif. Uh, we need to uh, hear from uh, Arif that the issue faced him during uh, project construction, solar PV project construction and execution uh, within Saudi Arabia. Arif, sir, can you uh, please? I see you're not audible. Uh, Arif, sir. Uh, Uh, okay, uh, Anand, uh, if you allow me, I will go uh, from my side because I've prepared uh, some notes related to the uh, problems we say we faced uh, during our project engineering, uh, during our project execution in Yom area. Uh, actually, we cannot call we cannot call it as uh, uh, problems uh, as more than uh, challenges that we faced during the project uh, engineering execution that uh, because this project is off a grid feeding uh, big camps, uh, the, um, uh, the customer of these camps is in your high level of uh, customer, prestige customer. So the challenge is here to provide the customer high uh, availability of uh, power uh, by using hybrid solution, uh, diesel power plant and solar PV. The issue here, we've been uh, looking to the best solution uh, in, in all in all in the project uh, by selection of uh, equipment uh, uh, using by after select, selecting uh, this equipment, we've been looking to the highest availability and hi highest tech of uh, equipment because we've using hybrid controller for these projects. So in terms of inverters, 
uh, during engineering stage, we've been looking to uh, the lowest simplified uh, solution that has uh, no any additives like combiners uh, from DC side or AC side. We work uh, closely with Huawei and Abu Nayyan to choose the best solution uh, after, after we uh, closing the commercial part of, of, uh, of the project. So we went to a latest, uh, latest model of inverter, uh, 185K, KTL, which can give uh, the highest performance, highest availability and a compatibility to connect with third party hybrid controller. Uh, this was the solution. Uh, we've, uh, we've select the uh, string inverter uh, on, uh, on the uh, centralized inverter because, uh, or to ensure the highest availability of inverters, highest performance, and uh, uh, the, maximum, uh, the maximum power to the grid in, in, commercial, in, the, in commercial part. Uh, this, in my point of view, related to inverters. Um, um, Noor, if, if you want to add anything uh, from your side. I'd like to just add a point from Huawei's side. Um, so with our presence uh, within the Saudi market uh, current, um, what we suggest is that to ensure that uh, we are involved at the early stage of the of the project to ensure we understand the key requirements of the projects themselves uh, and to ensure that the, the right product is selected and also uh, we can do the correct calculations in order for the the yield assessment uh, the, the cost assessment from the balance of system and also from a operation and maintenance perspective we need to fully understand uh, what is the, the cost associated to uh, the long term of the PV project itself. Um, it's very easy, easily, um, you know, selecting uh, brands of, of products and incorporating it into the projects. However, ensuring that the local presence uh, within the region and also ensuring that uh, the sufficient training um, and, and service capabilities are there within the region itself. So within Saudi itself, uh, we have a very large presence. Uh, from from Riyadh to Jeddah as well, um, and we are able to uh, uh, for projects such as uh, the Sakaka plant, for example, we are able to turn around uh, and and provide our customers uh, with inverter availability guarantees of of 99.5% uh, due to our product uh, failure rates being well below 0.5%. Uh, um, lastly, um, it's not just supplying the product and and providing a, a compatible product but also ensuring that the local presence in training, commissioning, and in ensuring that you know, the, the regular intervals of, of maintenance are done sufficiently uh, to ensure that the longevity of the equipment on site is able to withstand the conditions. Uh, now, as we can understand in Saudi, uh, we've got slightly more harsh environments with the temperatures, uh, with the humidity factors, um, and the uh, the factors of the ingress protection needs to be achieved to a high level of degree to ensure that these items uh, that are in remote areas are able to be uh, monitored correctly uh, and the health of the plants themselves can be done uh, digitally rather than uh, using manual labor and physical equipment on site. Yeah, exactly, Razwan. Thank you very much for your interruption. Uh, uh, actually, you're right. We've we've got uh, full support from Huawei, from Abu Nayyan during selection of the right inverter for the project, in order to optimize the commercial part of project compatibility with third-party equipment, hybrid controller, and also they support us uh, for the selection of a transformer station that has the uh, AC part transformation uh, from uh, 800 volt to 13.8. Uh, all these all these uh, systems uh, interconnecting uh, to each other. We've got uh, consultation from uh, Abu Nayyan uh, from WSP, the engineering partner of the project. So this lead to success of the project, uh, fortunately, and uh, it was a good news that we uh, energize 50% of the plant uh, before two weeks. Successfully, there was a, a, the expected result from inverters. 
Uh, today we are energizing 25% uh, of the project. Uh, so uh, we are satisfied from the performance of, uh, of inverters. That's uh, great to hear. Thank you very much for your uh, good words. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now uh, we need to go uh, to discuss uh, the LCOE management and how inverter can influence the LCOE and how we can improve it by selecting the right inverters, manufacturer, and how uh, Huawei can uh, improve it. Uh, Noor, can you can you discuss this point? I would like to direct this question to Arif, but I'm not sure whether whether he's uh, available or not. Uh, so I think uh, there is some issue from RF side, side end. Uh, I think. Okay, so we we'll go to Noor. Yeah, I think he is not audible. Yeah, Noor sir, can you please take this? Yeah. Uh, Usam sir, uh, you can also share your views on this uh, if you want, I think. Yeah, uh, I would like to ask Fahad if he need to add any point, uh, if he need to add, and then after that I will add my point related to the influence and uh, added value of inverters and how it's helping the uh, LCOE improvement. Uh, Fahad, do you need to add any point related? Uh, uh, yes, uh, sure. Uh, actually, uh for uh, for uh, for how inverters uh, helping to reduce uh, the localized uh, cost uh, of energy uh, this is uh, more about uh, the inverters uh, technology uh, itself uh, for example like for with the huawei string uh, inverters uh, there are uh, multi uh, mbbt uh, are integrated uh, with the uh, inverter uh, these uh, multi MBBT or the, number, the, the more numbers of MBBT are getting in the inverters, it help uh, it help uh, the inverters for more control control uh, for the smart for the uh, PV arrays, uh, which uh, which uh, divides like each array uh, to or to uh, to each uh, MBBT to handle uh, these uh, PV uh, arrays. Uh, this is uh, it will give more uh, control to the inverter uh, or to the MBBT to uh, control uh, the PV arrays and to increase the energy uh, yield uh, production. Uh, also, another point uh, that uh, for uh, for uh, to increase the uh, or to reduce the uh, uh, localized cost. Uh, uh, of uh, of uh, energy is uh, is 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 uh, is uh, is uh, the 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 the, the multi MPVT allow you uh, to uh, eliminate uh, the uh, DC combiner uh, boxes uh, usage and the DC uh, and the DC uh, side uh, and also other uh, other uh, Pictures in the inverter uh, can help uh, to uh, to uh, reduce the localized uh, cost uh, of energy. Uh, is 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 it's uh, uh, that 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 the type of uh, cooling uh, uh, inside uh, the inverter. Uh, if the inverter uh, is uh, natural, uh, for example, like with our inverters. For the CNDI uh, range, uh, all the inverters uh, are uh, natural uh, cooling. And also, Razwan uh, can add uh, more on the uh, technical features of uh, Huawei Surround. Thank you, thank you, Fahad. Uh, I would like to speak, uh, if, if Razwan allow me, I would like to speak uh, and uh, present my point before Razwan. Razwan is the manufacturing manufacturing art. So after us, he can add his point uh, and he can conclude all points related to uh, LCOE. Uh, 
Okay, this one. Yes, that's perfect for me. So uh, let's continue. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just a brief about uh, LCOE. Uh, it is the net cost of installed solar systems divided by expected lifetime of uh, energy output. So as we know, the uh, solar PV installed the installed system, uh, all customers, they expect to get the maximum from the system uh, to uh, or between 20 to 25 years. So all this equipment, uh, in terms of cost and operation point of view, has to perform very well. So in commercial part, uh, the customer always go to the best commercial uh, value-based uh, system. So he's he's not always looking to the commercial value, but also to the to, uh, commercial uh, level, I, I mean the price of the project, but also they are looking to the value of this project in terms of equipment performance. We can split it into two points related to CapEx and OPEX. So in the CapEx part of the project, we can see solar PV, they give a warranty for 25 years because they are fully confident of their systems. However, we can see in the inverter uh, point of view, uh, the warranty provided uh, these days is about five years and extendable to 10 years uh, by adding uh, a fees for that part. Uh, in terms of availability of inverters, uh, we have, as, as we said before, there is a two type of inverters available in, in, in the market, Saudi market. There is a centralized inverter and there is a, a central a, a strength type inverters. In the uh, C&I uh, uh, sector, we can see mostly, uh, mostly installed base is a strength type inverters. So we need to focus on strength type inverters. So uh, in terms of uh, CapEx, I think the uh, the price has to be uh, more managed uh, to meet the uh, the tariff uh, the energy tariff in Saudi market. Second part in terms of availability, uh, what we expect to, to have uh, from uh, from uh, inverter manufacturer a uh, more uh, more warranty uh, on their product as the as more as the uh, confident of their product performance. And instead of five, we are looking to get 10 years standard warranty uh, for all de delivered equipment, either from Huawei or from other manufacturer uh, or uh, yeah, other manufacturer in Saudi market. Uh, now in terms of uh, generated power, uh, the, uh, in the second part, uh, inverter uh, performance in these days uh, between 26 to 28 percent so these two percent uh, in, in high quality of inverters like Huawei, I think they can improve it and they can provide around 28 or nine, uh, sorry, uh, not, yeah, 98 to 99 percent performance of their product, which can uh, impact positively to the uh, energy yield. Second point related to distortion and harmonics. Yes, we know that Huawei, they have did a great development on their inverter by adding uh, internal uh, harmonics uh, filters. But still, we can see uh, the distortion or interruption coming from, uh, from uh, the environment or uh, like clouds or, uh, uh, or a sudden interruption uh, from uh, either dust or uh, or well, uh, or sorry or clouds this will make uh, sometimes distortion or interruption in the generated energy uh, this we need to hear from Huawei how we can smoothen the uh, output energy instead of to have some uh, distortion or interruption uh, if there is any cloud uh, impact the solar pv in terms of O and M, yes, we can see in Huawei uh, their inverters maintenance free. In case any damages or failure in their inverter, they can replace it uh, during the warranty period. Uh, we need to hear whether they can repair a uh, fast track repair within Saudi Arabia or uh, replace it uh, within a very short time. Uh, avoid more, uh, sorry, avoid uh, any uh, interruption uh, for generated power, improving uh, the yield energy. This is very important. Uh, this is the point from my end, and I would like to hear from Rizwan. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Badr. So from, from Huawei's side, um, you know, we, we're providing one of the key items of the solar projects. And in regards to LCOE, um, it is calculated in, in three different uh, uh, inputs. So you have the initial capex uh, of the project itself, 
you have the, the yield assessment that uh, is simulated and, and, uh, and lastly you have the OPEX. Now all three factors uh, specifically uh, with uh, projects that you or the customers are designing should be uh, done correctly and uh, collaborated with Huawei in detail. So from a CapEx perspective, we need to look at the details of regards to cables. We need to look at the arrangement of the PV modules, the structure, the arrangement, whether there's a tracker or a fixed tilt system. As all of these inputs will have an implication on the, uh, the overall CapEx of the project itself. So features that we have got incorporated within the inverters are the MBUS technology. So MBUS is a monitoring bus over the AC power cable. So this helps on further... Uh, saving on the initial uh, investment of the capex. Other parts coming into the yield assessment, um, as uh, my uh, partner in KSA, Mr. Fahad, mentioned, we have multiple MPPT technology within the inverters themselves. So this allows for a, a lower mismatch loss uh, that should be considered correctly uh, within the simulation of the of the yield itself. So with uh, inverters such as string inverters. Having multiple MPPT feature is able to uh, reduce that factor. Other factors that should be considered are the availability um, within the simulation. For example, softwares like PVSYST, uh, you will have parameters such as uh, an availability factor. Now, if you're having uh, products that have a proven track record with low failure rates, then we are able to uh, reduce this inverter availability factor down to 0.5%. Uh, from an inverter perspective. Other factors that Mr. M Mr. Bader mentioned in regards to inverters and their warranty periods. Um, Huawei has a standard uh, five-year warranty on the equipment of the inverter. Um, and as for the small-scale inverters, 20 kilowatts and below, we are providing a, a standard 10-year warranty. Now, what I would like to mention here as a, as a kind of an open discussion to, to everybody that's listening, is that the industry standard for inverters at this current stage is five years. Um, we are able to extend that to 10 years, 15 years, or even 20 years uh, based on a cost. And that uh, should be obviously a, a paid for service as we would need to uh, provide local presence for that duration of time and also ensure that there is local stock available of that product that has been procured uh, at that stage. So yes, uh, the standard five years is, is applicable, but uh, it doesn't stop us in providing uh, warranties up to 20 years. Um, in regards to proven track record and, and inverters lifetime, um, with Huawei, we have worked with third party organizations to test the product in, in, in its expected uh, operation. And it's showing that operation of plus 17 years is proven by a third party body. So these reports are available. If, if customers are interested in uh, reviewing those documents, please feel free to get in touch and we'll be happy to share that. Um, going into the last factor of OPEX, um, so that's the operation and maintenance um, of the system itself. Uh, Huawei uh, are adding features such as the uh, fusion solar monitoring platform and also uh, having uh, the features such as the IV curve diagnostic, which is a health check of your PV plant to check, you know, how uh, and if there's any defects on your site itself and whether to schedule that in urgently or at the next interval of maintenance that is required on site. So from that perspective, um, the analysis on the operation and maintenance should be considered correctly with the type of equipment that you're considering. Um, as Mr. Bader mentioned, the inverters are uh, maintenance free. However, we do have a section for a visual inspection of the inverters to ensure that they are um, you know, operating successfully. There's no uh, you know, defects occurred um, to ensure that there's no further damages on the equipment itself. So these um, uh, parameters uh, in regards to the PV projects and their assessments should be done correctly with the type of technology that you are considering for your PV plant. Thank you very much. So, hi, am I thank you, uh, Razwan. Thank you very much. Am I, am I audible yeah, now? I mean, yes, you are okay, RF. Can you please uh, go ahead? Yeah, I'm really sorry. Apologies for the inconvenience. Actually, I, my, my 
my microphone went down so i had to change that so again mm-hmm. uh hasam you know like uh, going back to the, the the earlier questions on the challenges so basically of course you know like a lot of my industry colleagues have uh, portrayed those challenges but again from the technical aspect you know like what i would like to highlight is all these projects are actually designed for a higher dc to ac ratio so given our experience in the in the middle east and and in saudi in particular you know like one of the projects i think uh, was mentioned over here that is almara 10 megawatt so basically uh, you know like what what we have seen is uh, we have seen dc to ac ratios to be high but i don't see that there to be a an established uh, uh, the coefficient to it for example you know like what we have seen there is a lot of variation in the irradiation in, in this region and because of which uh, i could see uh, a tripping and uh, you know like generation peak power overshooting so which essentially leads to tripping uh, and uh, of the of the electrical network so i could see you know like we need to come up with a solution or probably a, a system where we should have an effective way of optimizing the dc to ac uh, uh, ratios as far as you know like the inverters and, and the electrical network is concerned because you know like we all rely upon the monthly averages in terms of irradiance and we don't essentially look at the tmy or probably you know like the hourly irradiation profiles so that i feel uh, is 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 a is a shortfall uh, currently for the cndi which which needs to be uh, more uh, attended mr ari if i'd like to just comment on that point i think uh, there will be uh, further development on that with the development of energy storage so certainly, with certainly. Uh, uh, just relying on pv itself as as it's a uh, you know uh, reliant on the irradiation um with the cloud coverages or uh, you know scheduled maintenance that would be required they will have uh, disruption in in the power flow of the energy itself um however energy storage will become uh, part of that mix and and really stabilize uh, that power production throughout the day yeah i i definitely agree with you uh, rizwan on this and you know like uh, energy storage will definitely uh, definitely help this but uh, my my concern is you know like we need to have some kind of established standard where you know like the dc to ac ratios even for the even for the already established projects operating projects you know like where we understand the curves of the levels of irradiance and and come up with some kind of uh, some kind of uh, way forward to to establish uh, these these ratios that is what we, of course uh, the storage will definitely mitigate uh, this to a great extent i would say Thank you, thank you, Arif. Uh, moving to the next point, uh, I would like to ask you uh, your experience in uh, your experience in uh, improving or uh, impacting the LCOE by uh, adding or selecting the right inverter, or how inverter can help to improve LCOE. Certainly. See again, uh, the aspects that uh, optimizes the LCOE. is the effective it's it's not only inverter right it's, it's the effective design component selection and periodic investments over the project life and the effective onm given that the industry has matured and design processes are you know like well established the key aspects of optimizing lcoe remains with uh, with the component selection right so which is essentially the pv uh, technology selection and the inverters now again as far as industry is concerned i feel uh, the solar pv technology aspect is quite dynamic and uh, and dependent on the commercials right so for example pv modules uh, at times you know like pv modules become cheaper so utilizing of trackers may not give an attractive lcoe whereas in case pv modules become expensive and uh, you know like lcoe becomes viable i mean becomes uh, more effective with trackers so irrespectively you know the advantage is given by the inverter for selecting the technology may vary as well so fundamentally uh, we do see a notable advantage of uh, string inverter over central inverters for optimizing the lcoe but this is essentially driven by the pv module technology mounting system land terrain roof type roof orientation etc now now coming to the inverter uh, side uh, uh, of the t- technicals i would see you know like uh, there are two aspects again uh, at uh, at uh, to to be looked basically from a plant configuration as said i just said mention about the dc to ac ratio right and the provision of adding further dc capacities to counter uh, annual degradation see if we design the project right now only for the today's aspect right we don't see the project life of course we do see that but as far as optimizing the dc ac ratio as a designer we have always been encouraging to keep provisions of adding uh, pv modules to counter the degradation 
and maintain a uniform generation for the project life right so inverters i think you know like can definitely accommodate high dc to ac ratios of the project life and that may uh, yield to a lower lc and again uh, mr rizwan did mention about the mppts right inverters with high number of mppts definitely have an advantage but again at times you know like it is also pv technology driven as i have always been mentioning again for example you know like the bifacial modules which is the current trend for ground mount projects of course whether it is for inc or for utility scale right so pv technology remains the same if if it goes on ground i think that the current trend is uh, is bifacial modules whether be it on fixed tilt or trackers so again uh, specifically talking about this technology because of the current uh, uh, scenario you know like the the, the current uh, the trend i would see no two strings would be quite identical in performance right so no no two strings uh, essentially there may be multiple reasons to it right for example bifacial models cannot be cleaned from the rear side so i would see no two strings to be identical as far as performance is concerned so given this fact you know like uh, multiple mppts will definitely uh, will definitely give an edge over over a single mppt inverters and i would definitely expect lcu to be better with with string inverters in this case and uh, right. another aspect of looking at it is again the availability we have seen uh, string inverters to be better than central inverters uh, ideally you know like uh, we, we need to select inverters with a higher uh, mttf right that's that's uh, mean time between failures right which is observed to be very high of course you know like in string inverters while central inverters require higher spares availability of skill technicians uh, from manufacturers to be present on site or or, or within the country uh, may 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 lead to high down times that is what i say whereas in string inverters you can simply replace in minutes or probably in hours on site uh, that that actually saves a lot and in fact uh, our our past uh, comparisons uh, we have made you know like we have seen uh, 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 central inverters to be having an availability uh, of uh, 99.5% 99 to 99.5% whereas uh, we have seen string inverters to be performing uh, uh, to be available at around 99.9% which is which is a significant uh, uh, different i would say and of course uh, other aspect of optimizing lc would also include uh, uh, assessing the clipping and curtailment features of the inverters in case uh, of inverters are not effectively clipping the excess generation may lead to inverters performing at uh, uh, lower efficiencies and may not be in the project interest so inverters uh, definitely uh, play a major role in optimizing the 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 the, the project lcoes and uh, but given the fact you know like that every project is a different project and no technology is bad how you know like we, we need to uh, assess uh, this uh, keeping in mind uh, uh, various uh, aspects like uh, like mounting system pv technology uh, climate site features etc yeah mm -hmm. thank you very good very good uh, i would like to direct uh, in, in same point uh, a technical question to Roswan. how the inverters react uh, by uh, selecting a bifacial uh, one facial and uh, fixed fixed structure single axis trackers how how inverters uh, how inverters uh, react uh, on these systems Sure, thank you. So the the current range uh, of inverters are are now uh, currently all supporting uh, both uh, standard monofacial modules and bifacial modules. Um, but the key difference there is the, the the current that it will be produced from the PV modules and strings um, that are connected using bifacial modules. And specifically, uh, as the uh, rear side gain, uh, which will increase the current further. Uh, the inverter needs to accommodate for that and ensure that there is sufficient uh, available input current uh, within the inverter itself. And uh, to ensure that even if that current is to a, a high value, that the inverter would not uh, clip it or limit the clipping that would typically be occurring uh, on the MPPT level. Now, what we see uh, specifically in the PV module sector itself is that the development of the PV modules has very quickly uh, increased. However, uh, looking at the LCOE factor, uh, it may not be the most effective solution to go with the high-powered PV modules. So we do need to consider the overall uh, LCOE when considering high-powered PV modules and also bifacial modules as well. <coughs> um, other factors which we should consider is the albedo factor. Um, 
um, and factors such as what, what the ground conditions of where uh, specifically bifacials would be uh, being installed. So as um, was mentioned earlier, the uh, bifacial modules are typically installed on uh, ground mount PV plants. And what we've seen uh, specifically uh, with the bifacial modules is uh, you need to increase the height um, of the PV system itself in order to, to gain as much power production that is available from these bifacial modules um, and to get that uh, the rear side energy from, the, from, from that uh, PV string itself. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Rizwan, for the valuable uh, information. Going, going uh, forward, I would like to... to just add just one more point. Going forward, what we will start seeing is that uh, inverted technology and the number of MPPTs will be quite a, a key factor. Uh, and what we see in the next generation, as I presented earlier on in my presentation, is rather than just having a string inverter, there will be a, a, a bipolar uh, solution where the the MPPTs will still be in the field uh, and you'll still have a DC uh, circuit between the, the, uh, the controller in the field and the main inverter which will be localized to where the transformer station would be. So what we've seen is that the MPPT feature is a very important factor with high current PV modules. So the MPPTs, um, whether you're connecting two strings, one string or even four strings into an MPPT, will be able to be accommodated with the, the, the latest inverter technology uh, available from Huawei. Thank you very much. Thank you, great, great information, Rosman. Okay, moving now to another technical question uh, to uh, to installer or APC uh, uh, presence. A selection criteria of inverters and understanding of prevailing technologies in the segment. Uh, I would like to direct uh, to uh, Noor uh, if you want to add uh, anything related to this point. Hello, Noor. Yes. Yeah, please. You have uh, the question. Uh, what What is the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, the question of selection criteria of inverters and understanding of prevailing technologies in the segment. Um, that's that's a that's a very uh, tough question for me. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, obviously, I mean. You know, and 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 obviously, the you know the, the 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 inverters in general, for the most part, I mean, they're today's technology for the most part. You know, unless it's a no name, the the te technologies are really, really very, very similar. And in terms of efficiencies, they're very, very similar. Um, and we can agree to disagree on this, uh, uh, but it really boils down to, especially here in harsh climates, how reliable and dura the durability and reliability of those inverters, right? Technology, for the most part, is very, very similar, right? In terms of efficiencies, right? But it boils down to durability and reliability. And, and those are two main criteria, you know, so panel, uh, so uh, inverters that have been in harsh heat climates, right? Because today, you know, technologies, especially on the inverter side, they're very, very close together. Maybe there's one slightly better than the other. The other is slightly cheaper than the other. I mean, you know, technologies for the most part have come so close and the competition around the inverter market is so fierce it really boils down to durability and reliability and and you know and 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 uh, and track record within the region yeah i think the track record in the region makes a uh, makes a big difference actually because if they see you know like the data sheets of all the inverters actually look the same <laughs> that's what i'm saying as, as exactly like said the technology yeah. remains almost the same you know but there are a lot of you know like a lot of cuts and corners uh, are, are, are region specific, I would say. So I think an, an established track record in that geography essentially makes a makes a big difference. You know, like yeah, 
and and that gives you the reliability and durability of, of... absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely yes right uh, i would like to uh, hear from fahad fahad uh, do you need to uh, to share your information about selection of inverters uh, yes uh, as uh, as what uh, mr rano and uh, arab uh, said in here like for the selection criteria uh, i would i would uh, say the inverter uh, like in order like to select the right inverter for your project you need to consider like uh, three uh, main uh, points uh, here in, uh, in uh, the solar market in Saudi. I would I would say I would focus on the uh, operating uh, temperature for the inverter uh, and uh, the efficiency and uh, the power uh, rated of uh, the inverter. This is the main uh, I would uh, say like I would to focus on because here, like, like if you want to install uh, an inverter like an outdoor, it would be a very harsh uh, environment. So you need a reliable uh, inverter uh, to have uh, and to be operated in your uh, project. Fahd, I think, uh, you know, I'm going to compliment uh, your company and I'm going to say basically after sales service, right? What's okay. more important than anything that we've actually mentioned is, 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 is also after sales service and having an entity that is strong and that is servicing the product. And that is because again, those are, those are, those is, you know, the response time is very, very crucial. And I think, you know, you guys are very strong at that. So. That is a key differentiation when you actually buy an inverter. And you can uh, thank for the compliment later. Actually, actually, uh, thanks for uh, your comment, uh, Mr. Noor. But uh, we do have a uh, after sales uh, team that uh, specialized in uh, the after sales. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was saying this. I was yeah. saying that. I was saying you, as as an Abu Nayan trading, yeah. are among the the strongest after sales existence in saudi arabia specifically okay. saudi arabia okay. uh, so i was saying that basically after sales service and i was giving you a compliment that you didn't oh, quite yeah. understand yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. I, I said you can thank me later <laughs> all right Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to just add response. one last point uh, on this particular topic from, from Mr. Noor and uh, Mr. Fahad. You know, if we just look at the last year and a half, what we've just experienced with Corona uh, and the travel restrictions, etc. Uh, having equipment and local presence is going to be a very important factor uh, in, the, in the coming years, uh, specifically ensuring, you know, equipment providers are, are locally present and that turnaround service is, is available, whether from partners or from the manufacturer themselves. And I'd like yes. to just conclude it on that last point and, and hand it back right. over. To totally agree, Razor. Totally agree. Totally agree. So, and thank you for your good words, Mr. Noor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, um, uh, by closing uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, session, uh, I would like to thank all for uh, their uh, valuable information, sharing information, experience uh, on this panel. And uh, thank you, Anand, for organizing uh, this uh, call. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we just have one question from the audience. I request our audience, if they have any question, to please post them in q and box. Uh, till then, I'll just show the question on screen. So. This is the question. If anyone can take this, sure, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll take a stab at that. So, I mean, the levelized cost of electricity for commercial and industrial projects really vary tremendously, right? Varies from a size perspective, so if it's below uh, a one mega or you know above, and once you go above five mega, ten mega. 20 mega, those are very, very different uh, costs or, or levelized costs of electricity. But roughly speaking, you know, for, for, for anywhere, you know, north of, of 20 mega, and, you know, you're looking at 
the heavy uh, energy guzzlers like uh, the cement factories, the steel factories, right? Where you are, um, where there's much electricity needed, then you're looking at, you know, somewhere, you know, around, uh, um, and by the way, today's prices have increased tremendous, <laughs> tremendously as a result of everything increasing, whether it's solar panels, metal, steel, copper, everything has increased. So roughly speaking, you know, you're looking at, at, at potentially, you know, 19 halala or, or something of that nature, uh, maybe less, a little bit. I mean, you know, you could you could see, you know, whereas a, a couple of years ago, pre COVID, you know, we could have seen 13 halala, right? <laughs> so, uh, and those for big uh, power plants. Now, if you go down, um, you know, below uh, one mega, and and prices for CNI uh, at that point, you know, goes up to 22, 23 halala. You know, it all depends on finance. But again, you know that that's so that is pretty much the range from you know making adjustments to to uh, increases in supply chain. So anywhere from 17 halala to 23 halala is is pretty much a levelized cost of electricity. And I'm assuming that this is also a, the, you know, without the, 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 the cost of ownership per se, but it, it's, it's, it's roughly around that number. Thank you, Nusa, for de uh, answering this question. Uh, we yeah, so we have one more question. Uh, it's about the recent revision in net metering policy uh, and how it has helped in boosting the installations. So if anyone can answer that question. Yes, uh, I would like uh, to take a lead to answer this question related to uh, the uh, net metering uh, policy. Uh, yes, uh, there is a net metering policy. Uh, it's already been established. There is a project installed connected to net meters, uh, but still uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, firm or final um, uh, firm and final regulations not announced yet. Still under development. There could be new uh, new uh, regulations related to wheeling because the current available uh, net, meter, net metering policy is related to small scale or residential and uh, and commercial scale up to two mega. Now there is uh, expected a new regulations. It will come in the market uh, to 20 mega. So it, would, it will help the wheeling, uh, wheeling uh, solution projects. So which uh, will encourage more and more investors, uh, developers to invest in solar and renewable energy business. Uh, in terms of avail availability of net meters, yes, uh, there is an installed base, a big installed base, more than 20 million uh, net meters installed in the network. It will help uh, solar PV and, re and renewable energy business. I, I wish I answered uh, the question. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, so, so with this, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, thank you very much to our esteemed panel for this wonderful session and a very special thanks to Sam sir for taking up the moderation and superbly thank managing you. the session. Uh, thank you everyone for extending their time and support for this event. We promise you to come back with more exciting topics very soon. The, no the door is now open for networking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye-bye.